this is Lola Lee T. Hi, everybody. Welcome to 90 Day Fiancé, Season 5, Episode 9, Recap and Review. Hamza was told by Memphis that she wanted a prenup, and he immediately accused her of thinking the worst. So this made Hamza very sad. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why he was sad because, well, Memphis is right to think of a prenup. I mean, what if things do not work out between them? Then what? Will he demand half of her money? Maybe this is just a test. Don't get me wrong. I don't disagree with her wanting a prenup. I disagree with the timing. She should have talked to Hamza about this before she came to meet him. But Hamza was all in his feelings and started to have second thoughts about the relationship. He said that he finds that she speaks quite disrespectfully to him. I bet he does. And I am not surprised at all that he's feeling like this. Because remember, Hamza? You are in a relationship with an American woman that is used to calling the shots. So it must be a huge culture shock to him to be in a relationship with Memphis. So Hamza is coming across like someone she has to take care of, be responsible for. He's not coming across as a 50-50 partner. I really like both Hamza and Memphis. But she does treat him and talk to him like a toddler. They have to use a translator to communicate. And sometimes the translation just comes across really, really harsh. I mean, why didn't she just ask him about his financial situation before she decided to marry him? I mean, the man doesn't have a driver's license, doesn't have a car. I don't think he has a job. I don't think that he has a career equal to hers. I mean, she is a nurse practitioner. She's sort of like a doctor. And I'm sure she makes really good money. And Hamza did say that he didn't have any money in the bank, he didn't have any savings, and he can't even contribute a dime to the wedding. It looks like Memphis got herself a loser. I mean, that's how it's coming across. So unless she wants a sugar baby situation here, I guess Hamza will kind of be like her sugar baby because she's the one that's going to be paying all the bills. And poor Memphis, she doesn't realize that regardless of a prenup, once Hamza comes to the United States, she will be automatically financially responsible for him for 10 years. And that doesn't even change if they do divorce. So, oh Lord, who is going to tell Memphis? Ben woke up in Lima, sent Mahogany a message got no response, so he worked out because, of course, he wants to look good for Mahogany. He got some advice from his friend who, of course, questioned whether Mahogany was a catfish. But regardless, Ben decided to go to Mahogany's hometown after not hearing back from her at all. But he did receive a message while he was on his way to go meet her, the message was that Lima was far from San Bartolo, which is where he was actually headed. Oh my God, Ben is such a fool. That message did not change his mind. He still went to the restaurant and waited for hours and she never showed up. Who does Ben remind you of? And Ben. Maybe this is God's plan.
Mike planned a very special dinner for Hermina and her family. The food looked so amazing. Great job, Mike. So he proposed to her and she accepted. And then the next day, Mike said goodbye to her and her family. And he said that he would try to come back in a few months. Mike and Hamina had a very tearful goodbye. But I'm really worried about Mike because in the Green Room interview, Hamina expressed uncertainty about the relationship. And we all know Mike is not her type. She is out of his league. She really depends on him financially. And I think this relationship is more about money and getting her to America than anything else. Elena was rejected by Caleb. And I got to say, I do not feel bad for Elena. Okay, so this is how things went down. Elena kept pressuring Caleb for an answer on where he wanted the relationship to go. And they had this little chat after their two-day rendezvous in Turkey. Caleb told Elena that he had serious reservations about dating a little person. He didn't know what that would entail for the rest of his life. He said to Elena, I think you deserve someone who can do everything you need in terms of being your aid. Caleb was brutally honest with her and said he doesn't see himself dating a little person for the rest of his life because of the hardships that would entail. He said, I just don't know if the life I want for myself is one of helping someone so much. Elena was devastated and heartbroken. I think that Caleb rejected her because it was a turnoff when she kept going so hard at the intimacy stuff. I definitely think he lost his interest and attraction after that. I also think that Elena downplayed her disabilities a lot prior to their meeting and I think the man that commits to her is going to have to practically do everything for her. And I'm sure he feels a little betrayed by how she downplayed her disability. And remember that Caleb has already stated that she wasn't really his type, but he was willing to give it a shot because they clicked online. But I think in real life, things were very different. And I must say that I hope this is the last episode with Elena. You guys know why. So bye girl. So during last night's show, we finally got to see Gino without his hat. <laughs> this was the best part of the show. Jasmine was so pissed at Gino because he sent her nudes to his ex, Sugar Baby. So let's examine his head without that hat. I know I'm not the only one that's been waiting for this moment. He doesn't have a weird shaped head like I thought he would have. His head looks fine. He has like a normal shaped head. You know, like there's some people, they have like lumps in their head. Some people have the two horns. Some people even have a cone shaped head. So <laughs> his head is completely bald except for a patch of hair on the back. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but some people 
in my comment section, they're saying that it's to give the impression that he has long hair when he puts the cap on. I don't know. But I do know that men that are going completely bald usually shave their head completely. My man is bald, so I know. All that I was thinking when he was fighting with Jasmine and everything was going down, all that I was thinking was, not the hat! <laughs> not the hat! Oh my god. Also, how dare he be so defensive? Gino deserves all the smoke from Jasmine. Jasmine... <laughs> Jasmine also ripped into Gino, calling him every name under the sun. Her relationship with him is over. And she also reminded him, she also talked about the part where he called her one of his sugar babies. So she said that if she was looking for a sugar daddy, she would have found one that was better than him. <laughs> So this meme has been floating around for a while now. So now that Jasmine has snatched the hat off Gino's head, which hat do you think he should wear next? <laughs> Thank you guys very much for watching. Please let me know your thoughts. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Go look for me on Twitter and Instagram. Just search for Lola Liti. I love you guys. Bye.